We were changed forever that day, James and John and I. We'd seen Moses and Elijah appear with Jesus upon the mountainside and we had heard the voice of God himself as he proclaimed Jesus as his son. Of course, I already knew this and had told Jesus that I knew he was the Messiah. But to hear the words from God's own being, well, that was something else. So we were silent as we returned from the mountain, trying to take in what we had witnessed as we picked our way down the stony mountainside. When we reached the foot of the mountain, we saw the rest of the 12 surrounded by a large crowd. And they seemed to be arguing about something as we approached. When we reached the foot of the mountain, they saw Jesus and they turned and ran to meet him. Jesus was curious and asked them what they were arguing about. A man in the crowd ran forward and pleaded with Jesus. Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. The man's voice was filled with terror. The boy, it seemed, was possessed by a spirit which threw him into convulsions, causing him to foam at the mouth and to gnash his teeth and sometimes fall into the fire. The man said he asked the disciples to drive out the demon, but that not being able to. I turned and looked at my nine fellow disciples, the ones who had not been with us on the mountain. I could see the bewilderment in their faces, their disappointment that they had not been able to help this boy. I was secretly glad that I'd not been there. Failure would have been frustrating, annoying even, and I could see that this was how they felt. Jesus turned and spoke to them, and the exasperation in his voice was unmistakable. You unbelieving and perverse generation, he said. How long shall I stay with you and put up with you? And he told the man to bring his son forward. I watched nervously. Was this someone whom even Jesus could help? Where would that leave us? Would we all be made fools in front of a huge crowd? I squirmed as I watched and immediately felt ashamed of my lack of faith. As the boy came near to Jesus, the spirit threw him to the ground. Jesus asked how long the boy had been like this. From childhood, came an answer, and then a heartfelt plea. If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Jesus replied, everything is possible for one who believes. The man knew that Jesus was no ordinary man. Why would he have brought his son here if he hadn't? But this was a big moment, a real test. Yet without hesitation, he answered, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Jesus looked satisfied and he spoke again in a firm, commanding tone, but without raising his voice. He rebuked the spirit and ordered it to leave the boy. Immediately, the spirit shook the boy and then left him. The boy was still. And then Jesus took him by the hand and he stood up and walked back to his fa father with a quiet calm that would have seemed impossible just moments ago. The crowd looked on in amazement and the boy's father knew that his faith had been rewarded. The disciples who tried to heal the boy took Jesus aside embarrassed about their inability to help. Why couldn't we drive out the spirit, they asked. Jesus. Jesus' answer was to the point. Because you have so little faith, truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. They looked disappointed and I felt for them. I wish that they'd seen what James and John and I had seen on the mountainside. Then their faith would have stood the test, I'm sure, and they could have healed the boy. And yet, even as I had stood and watched this latest miracle unfold, I'd let the doubts creep in myself. Sometimes it seemed as if the crowds and strangers 
who really didn't know Jesus at all, had more faith than we, his chosen followers. How could this be? We had seen so much. We had witnessed so many miracles, heard his teachings. And some of us just a few hours ago had had God himself announce his son. Why was our faith so weak? I remembered the words Jesus had spoken to me just a few days earlier when I protested as he spoke about the suffering and death that I would befall him. He had rebuked me, calling me Satan, for being able to see things only as humans see them. Maybe that's the problem. However much I believe, however much I have witnessed, and however much I know in my heart of hearts that this man, Jesus, is the Son of God, the devil is always lurking seeking to plant the seeds of doubt. The words of the boy's father came back to me, and so I turned to the Lord and prayed, O oh Lord, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. 